Hey guys, uh, Calvin YGO here. I am here with my good friend Julian. Um, a couple weeks ago, we went up to Collectible Exchange uh, and he won a PS5 in their 50 man uh, GOAT tournament. Um, so Julian, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. You know, off of a great win. I'm happy to support my local YouTuber, Calvin YGO. <laughs> big fan, big fan. Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, so, Julian uh, played Earth Aggro, um, and there's uh, two great videos uh, from Echo YGO. Shout out the homie, Echo YGO. We love Echo. Echo YGO, definitely. Um, and those are great videos. Uh, Julian's uh, Earth Aggro's strongest soldier. Um, so there's a bunch of content from him specifically on Echo's channel, and I'll link it below. Um, you know, going over kind of the... You know, just like the basics of the deck, you know, it's like your your average profile. Um, but we wanted to do something kind of a little bit deeper because um, Julian took some great notes uh, during his tournament run. Uh, and I, I've been playing the deck a little bit. I've been helping like, you know, theory craft some stuff with him. And I just also wanted to kind of get this out there because I think Earth Aggro and we've talked about this a lot. Earth Aggro is like so good. It's so good. And people yeah, it's just at least so much better than the amount of people that are playing it. Like if the amount of people that were playing Earth Aggro, I, I mean, I, I I've said this before in the past, but if the amount of people that were playing Earth Aggro were similar to even the amount of people that were playing like Goat Control at the event or like some kind of Goat deck, which uh, you know is considered to be uh, on the lesser power scale of everyone just wants to play Chaos Turbo or Warrior. Um, it would top so much more. It would top so much more. I think it's really funny because when you won this event, um, there was a GGP like or another event across the world where Earth yeah, Aggro also won. Yeah, so it was crazy that like you know Earth Aggro like is just winning these big events randomly at the same time. Um, but you know this list. Um, so you had the the profile. Um, from the regional um and then this is a different completely different well not completely but a very but it's still a different list so let's um kind of go through some of the changes so the biggest thing is uh spies are gone and what was the logic there yeah i completely cut spies from the list entirely i switched the mine cons to the sideboard and i wanted to make sure that i considered all of my options we always talk about considering all options uh that's that's what we do in san diego we we test every single card we test all of the cards that could be in the same slots and something that i always try to emphasize is um keeping what's good about a deck because that's how you make a good list and changing up the utility slots so for me the cards that you can change up were the, uh, at least the two spy and the two minecon in the main deck and i in testing i just really didn't like the idea that i was making my opponents no men of cross outs live and the initial theory was to like they banish my spy their spies in their deck gets banished uh but it's you still get behind in tempo because at the end of the day you have to set and pass which means that you're not normal summoning and pass and passing um, and I've been testing with, with Grand Marg, and I've been testing with Brain Control, and I noticed my win percentage was just going up when I was playing these cards. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to put it to the test. I'm going to see if these cards are main deck worthy because uh, the other part of Earth Aggro that I really liked was playing Earths, was making sure that Gigantes was always live, keeping that aggressive theme, and man did i really not want to just play cards that didn't work well together in the main deck um and i definitely thought that grand mark was uh, gonna be something that people weren't prepared for so i'm always looking for something that people aren't prepared for and uh and then until like that tournament i was like okay i have a good idea that this is gonna do well but then it actually proved itself in a high level long tournament setting which was nice and i really enjoyed it I think um, for Grandmark specifically, it just has so much utility in the fact that it just hits a set card, right? So not only is it like a great 
anti-chaos card. You know, you hit their set monster, they cry because they lose a moth or a spy. Um, but also, like, against aggro matchups, being able to hit a set back row. And you're always going to probably beat over whatever they have, because 2400 is an insane stat line in this format. Um, so, you know, how effective was the Grand Marg over your tournament run? So I'm going to go with with the times that I did see it and was able to tribute summon for it, which wasn't like a lot of times, but was at least like once every match. Uh, I definitely was able to like get a grand mark through for at least most of my matches. Uh, and it was very impactful because something that I got asked the other day was, would you consider like a Zabor or would you consider like a different monarch? And besides being Earth, uh, something that is a really big benefit of Grand Mark was that there isn't any downside really, unless you're having to destroy your own like set back row or your own set monster, which never really happens. Uh, uh, being able to combo it with the brain control, I thought about, okay, well, I needed something to make Grand Mark more playable. I don't want to just throw in Grand Mark. It's not a Chaos Orc. But it is two power cards that I can put in in the, in the spot like Chaos Orcs. So I was thinking, well, if I play the Brain Control, and I'm playing against like Warrior, right? If I play the Brain Control, I take their monster, I tribute it for Grand Mark, um, I, and they use a back row on it, like let's say like a Solemn. I'm going two for two and halving their life points. Mm -hmm. And if they don't use a Solemn on it, then I'm going, uh, then I keep my grand mark up and that's a, like a plus and advantage. And then they also have to deal with the 2400 beat stick that can be, I can attack with or I can choose to not attack with. Uh, so the combination of both uh, really helped out the playability of the grand mark. Uh, and you can just like play one, but I think with the theme of the deck, I wanted to make sure that both of the cards were good on their own but you had the capability of being able to combo both. Like the brain controls needing to be in there instead of smashing grounds. Because if you open up a hand of like Grand Mark, smashing ground, that's a brick. You know, yeah. you're not going to be able to summon the, the, the Grand Mark. But if you open up smash ground independently, or if you get are able to summon the Grand Mark, that's good. Or the brain control, uh, what really convinced me to main deck it was the fact that it's an out to a chaos monster. It's now to a chaos monster. It's always live against warrior, uh, and uh, the fact that I can use it for whatever I want was really it was really good. You know, it, it did a similar thing to uh, the mind controls in the sense of like if even if I'm taking something that I don't really need to take, it clears their board so that that way I can attack directly. Like let's say if they have like a spy up, right? Or like right. let's say if they have like two spies up. Which uh, is a concern for all aggro decks. You know, you just summon two spies, it's going to happen. Uh, mm -hmm. Being able to go brain control, take their spy, tribute it for Grand Mark, or even if you don't have the Grand Mark, um, you can go brain control, take their spy, normal summon like Goblin Attack Force, special summon Gigantes. Uh, and then the Goblin will deal with the spy, and then the Gigantes can get in for damage, and you can right. also like swing with the spy as well. Uh, that it, the plays for it are as good as you can make it and that's something that i really liked and i i think that it gave a new level to the deck because before like the previous list like the one that that topped worlds uh, was very very streamlined right it was very very you know put your helmet on and run through and uh you know like um uh uh, like some other good players that I've, I've talked about, the, if you're a good player, you need to play cards. Like if you're an experienced player, you need to play cards that allow you to make these cool plays. Everyone likes to make cool plays. But if you're really smart about it, you can make those really cool plays like that at the right time. And it can throw a lot of people off. But with the standard Earth aggro list, people are playing, it, but they're like bubbling. You know, they're like mm -hmm. barely topping sometimes. And I'm like, man, what, why is that happening? I really like this deck. And I think it's because those really good players were not able to play cards that allowed them to shine. You know, play cards that allowed them to outplay their opponent, which is a big thing that I always like to tell people. And mm -hmm. Brain Control Grandmark was definitely a way that I was <laughs> able to outplay people while still keeping the bread and butter of the Earth Engine. 
Yeah, after after playing uh, a little bit of Earth Aggro Locals, I can definitely... It, it's such a dopamine hit. The Brain Con uh, tribute their guy for Grand Marg and hit something, and then hit... It's, it's like the biggest dopamine hit that I've had in this uh, format. Probably, like, since I started, like, playing competitively. But also kind of kind of going along the lines of like being able to outplay, uh, you know, the double duo or the double dust shoot uh, in the main. Um, so like a lot of lists recently have been running three. I mean, there have been lists that run one. Um, why have we decided two is the perfect number here for this list? Uh, so in play testing. I wanted to see the practical effects of playing two. I did consider three, and the idea came from where when you're actually playing the deck, you realize that your opponent sometimes just gives you time because your 2300s are big, they don't want to attack into your rat, if they're a good player, you can just sit back a little bit and you know i think well why not just play three trap dust shoot and you certainly can uh and in some builds you definitely can uh however i just really couldn't find like another card that i wanted to take out that was so like in it so impactful in the mid game uh, in the beginning you know I, i'm gonna make it out the early game no matter what in this deck i didn't yeah. wasn't really like pressed for it um the other slots that you can change out would be like maybe the third dust tornado, maybe the torrential tribute, and uh, you know maybe you could mess around with the grand mark brain control package and then play something else. But in my opinion, at that point you're just playing a different build, which is a whole different conversation in and of itself. And so that way the how you use the trap dust shoots end up being a little bit different because. Um, all of my monsters can deal with monsters that my opponent plays. So I was like, well, I just need to get off one dust shoot. I just need to get off one dust shoot. I don't need to draw another dust shoot. I don't need a double dust shoot, people. I yeah. don't even need to have dust shoot in the main or like in, in my very first turn. Uh, and I lost a lot of die rolls too. So I'm, I'm pretty glad that uh, I was able to uh, like not have to play three because i didn't go first a lot <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but i i think the biggest thing that i didn't want to do was brick off of top decking dust shoot because a lot of people like emptied their hands they're forced to empty their hand when playing this deck you can't just hold stuff you can't just hold the mirror force in your hand you have to set you have to expend the regeki break and uh after like turn two turn three uh that my opponent will uh, usually doesn't have enough cards in their hand for me to dust shoot them uh and it, i did find a few times even with two dust shoot in the main deck that sometimes i would just have to draw the second dust shoot or i would just have a dust shoot in my hand and it was and it wasn't live and so i was like man i'm thinking of the ways that i'm losing with this deck and the only way that i can lose in the trap lineup is if I'm going second and my opponent like doesn't have a hand that allows me to trap dust shoot them. Mm. Uh, and if I'm doing my job correctly, I'm making them trade advantage with me with my big beat sticks and putting the pressure on. So yeah, you can get off maybe one if they like Thunder Dragon, add Serpent back and draw. But at that point, you're kind of already winning because then they have one more real card. Right. So I was okay with that. And I was like, well, why don't I just play another card that, like Torrential Tribute or the third Dust Tornado that actually answers what they draw. Mm -hmm. And so that was, my, that was my thought process around not playing the third. Uh, uh -huh. But I always encourage people to test it out. You know, maybe maybe at, at your locals or your big event, it might be the better, better call or in a slightly different build where the third Dust Shoot is more impactful. Um, personally, I just don't like three Dust Shoot um uh, you can play it in like turbo you can play it in like warrior but my hot take is that warrior plays three dust shoot in the main sometimes because you need to reduce the hand size from uh, for blade knight so you need to be able to just set everything you know just set 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 uh and dust shoot is just another trap that you can set um, yeah. yeah definitely and, uh, but fair I didn't need that this day. yeah um the other thing i wanted to kind of touch on um because you know we we look at this deck it's earth aggro but then we see like the spirit reaper 
which is like kind of a defensive card. It, you know, it, it kind of clashes a little bit, you could say, with like the ideology of Earth Aggro in that Spear Reaper, small body, you know, doesn't really kill them how a uh, Goblin Attack Force or Gigantes or a Lily does. So what was the like reasoning to bring the Reaper into the side? Oh, I love Spirit Reaper. Spirit <laughs> Reaper is my guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm o I always like to say, you know, play cards you love. And I was looking for a slot that was also going to replace the uh, Spies in the main deck. So I wanted something against that I could put in against Warrior. Uh, that was that was a defensive option. I was thinking about maybe Munition of Faith. I was thinking about playing the two Spies, but that was too many slots in my side deck. And I didn't really like how it flowed from going into the main into the side. And I was thinking, okay, well, if I'm clearing their field with, like, a Mind Control or a Sakura 2 Armor or a Smashing Ground or something along those lines, or I'm killing over something, I'm getting in a direct shot with, like, a normal pretty often. And so I was like, well, oh, well, you know what's a great card to put in for to attack directly? Spear Reaper. Uh, and it survives. I was kind of afraid that sometimes I would have a hand, like, against Warrior where I wouldn't be able to get something to like stick on board. Like I would attack with like a goblin attack force. It would go to defense. They would like kill the goblin and then Grandmar would be like less live. So I wanted something a little bit more sticky. And I didn't think that like the the warrior matchup specifically, which I, I, I still take very seriously, even though I consider it like a good matchup. I want to make sure that every single spot in my main deck is good in the post side because there are a lot of cards in the main deck that are you can side out against warrior like the no men across outs the level two uh e even like uh the trap dust shoots aren't very good so i needed mm -hmm. cards to be able to put in against warrior that i was able to take out these suboptimal cards going second going first uh and uh, kind of get a surprise factor in you know get that get that that one direct hit when i could trade it off and make my force my opponent to use something on this fear reaper like beta snatch deal or something and that is like the idea with it uh the other part of it was i was also side decking a mobius because it's an aggro deck you know people are going to be putting in chakra to armors and i wanted to be able to if i'm putting in the mobius i need the mobius to go off same idea with the grand mark mm -hmm. i need something sticky that is not just gonna die by getting run over or, or like it, it, that's not gonna be like traded with i can just normal spirit reaper and pass and my opponent cannot like run it over no matter how big their monster is and that's something i really liked about spirit reaper and it was yeah. my guy he baited like a solemn judgment and uh, a couple times and i remember uh, um, really afraid of that card yeah i mean people just like holding cards you know uh, myself included, but I remember there was a moment in your semifinals, you normaled Reaper uh, into a Don Zalug, and you're just like, I don't really care. Like, I just need him to stay alive. And so you just normaled it into a Don Zalug, uh, and you just tried to brain con the Zalug. It didn't go through. It, it, it brought out a Solemn, which is crazy. Yeah, yeah, that was mighty unfortunate. Um, but it was still like a solid play be because it, it, it forces my opponents to have to make those tough decisions. And I was playing, I was playing against Min, and he's he was a great player. And he shout out a, Min. Shout out Min. You know he got a he got a game off me. Uh, but that's just the that's just the surprise factor of playing a card that sticks and understanding like where in your sideboard you need a card like that is to pay attention to every single slot that you put in all those 15 cards make sure that they're all being used to their fullest and a lot of people can think that oh i'll be fine you know i'll just put in whatever but if you're not citing cards in with a purpose or with like a plan then then it, you're not gonna have an added layer of contingency you know you're not going to be able to outplay your opponent like i said and uh i, I just like the fun one ofs like that, uh, especially when I'm playing like three ofs of like Goblin Attack Force Gigantes. Yeah. Uh, the maxing out on like two ofs so I don't break. Uh, and I'm glad to see Spear Reaper get into practice. And, you know, I play a lot of Chaos Turbo as well. I play every deck. So 
I do like a. I played the Spirit Reaper in, in, in Chaos Turbo. I played Spirit Reaper in Warrior. And I, I think it's just a great solid card. And I was looking for a spot to include it in, especially with that needed defense, in my opinion. When people are putting in these, um, like, I got some, like, smashing ground a few times, you know. I, right. If people, people are putting in all these cards to, like, anti warrior, you know. So I was like, okay, I'm going to need something like that. Okay. Okay. Um, kind of speaking of anti warrior, um, so, like, the, the two Sakus. And I think, like, a lot of people, you know, when they are thinking of, you know, the aggro matchup in any kind of deck, there, there's, like, two kind of schools of thought, right? It's either, like, oh, we go Decree to, like, turn their traps off and, like, try and live, or we just, like, max out on, like, Battle Trap Saku. So I, I see, like, we're at two Saku. Is it just because we couldn't fit a third one in? Like, would you have wanted to run a third? You had a 16th slot. So with two Sakuretsu armor, like, oh, I'll just talk about the Sakuretsu armor just in the beginning. Just yeah. to be able to, to play them. I I live in the, real, in the real world. You know, I played against these cards that people are going to put in to attack me. Your hands are good, but sometimes they just sideboard in, like, a, a good monster that attacks over like a like a cypher soldier or something over yeah. like a goblin attack force and you just need to be able to trade it down uh being able to get it on the attack and being able to get it on the defense for the smashing grounds plus the, the sakura to armors um i needed two going first and two going second uh, sometimes i would put in both but i usually wanted to see like a, that, that would kind of be like a read um but I, I wanted to be able to get both in as like a crack back on the attack to defend something that I needed. Uh, like, let's say if you have like a rat up and then they go a DD warriorly, that's like a, like a bad pairing for rat. And you don't always get mm -hmm. to like choose that. So in the warrior match, we're in the aggro matchup uh, in general. I just wanted to get rid of those options and being a warrior player. Uh, as well, I understand how good Sakuretsu armor is against the deck. Sometimes your only option is to attack. Like, you just, your play is attack. And you can't do anything else. You just have to attack. So, Sakuretsu armor is, to me is like second and third uh, Mirror Force. But with the Smashing Grounds, I wanted to make sure that I was still keeping them in because in Earth Aggro, you don't need to set everything. So, like, like classic blade knight warrior can't play smashing ground because it it levels up your hand you know or like i, I guess they can uh but traditionally they don't you know traditionally right. they don't that the idea is that i can't set smashing ground and it be good and use it you know i i can't i have to play it immediately but with earth aggro you can play smashing grounds and that's why a lot of people play smashing grounds in the main deck for this deck and that's like something that i think you wonder why why is this deck playing smash Grounds? it's mainly the the part four where the sucker two armors would take uh, and i when i was putting it in for a lot of these cards i would also play a little bit differently so sometimes i would just pass like they wouldn't see the the smashing ground the the, the sucker two armors in the main deck you know and sometimes they would just go a little aggressive um so i could just go like set pass and then i like trade a little bit and then once i like trade like the sucker two armor or you know, you know, like maybe like a brain con or something, or like monster for monster. Uh, in that matchup, uh, my monsters will inevitably be stronger than their monsters, and that's like the game plan. I just need to trade the cards down. Then when we get into a simplified game state, my monsters beat their monsters. So the idea is that I'll win in the end. The other part of Sakuretsu Armor was my worst matchup is control. Uh, if if I'm being smacked in the face with a thousand eyes restrict, I am having a sad day. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, thousand eyes restrict is definitely a big weakness of this deck, and I wanted more cards to be able to get rid of thousand eyes restrict. And so, at one point, I realized against Go Control that they just they are just like a beat stick deck in disguise sometimes, especially in the post side. You know, when they're siding mm -hmm. in, like, some Byros, or maybe they might have, like, an injection fairly of their own. Uh, maybe they play, like, Haikus or... Berserk Gorilla. Uh, Berserk Gorilla, as some some Berserk Gorillas in the chat, you know? <laughs> some of the Berserk Gorilla enjoyers out there. Shouts out to them. 
uh you know the they'll they'll just start swinging you know even if they they even if they don't do that or if they don't make that play a lot of go control plays will just attack with thousand eyes restrict to do damage you know to an empty board they'll take the goblin attack force and it's too it's too juicy 2300 you know the, you gotta attack directly and i need that out you know <laughs> so that, that's why i really like the overlap you know being mm-hmm. able to overlap with the warrior matchup the uh the control matchup and the the freaky freaky decks you know the the, the boomer decks that are that are playing like maybe like a warrior engine with like a control package or something mm-hmm. like that you know i was like oh i'm just gonna side sakuretsu armor against those decks because at one point they just boil down to i'm gonna attack you <laughs> and play like weird cards around it and i think that the sakuretsu armors played really well i was that w- was a new inclusion a while ago but it, they have proven their worth in the side deck for go control specifically because like that is just such a a good deck into this one um just a quick question regarding like the post side right um do you feel like putting more good traps in against like a decree is potentially harmful to you um like when you're trying to you know just kill them or like prevent them from killing you well, when it comes to the game plan against control, I'm usually taking out the trap dust shoots because while they do give me time, the problems that I face against control are not usually like something that I need to trap dust shoot against that deck. Uh, it's usually the metamorphosis, the scapegoats, and you can't trap dust shoot those cards. So I needed to always put those in, and if they have decree up. Uh, I did play against a uh, shout out to homie Dim- Dimitri, a big shout out young Meech. Shout out, yeah, yeah, shout him out. Uh, uh, he did have Decree up against me, and I was like, you know what, this is fine. My car, my while my back row is turned off, his back row is also turned off. So unless he has like the dream hand, which you have like Decree, you have you know maybe like a book and like a thousand eyes restrict or something. Uh, you need to have all of those cards together in tandem with each other and have like the perfect hand while also keeping in decrees while me also not having the chainable trap dust shoot while me also not having heavy mystical space typhoon breaker you know the natural outs to decree if i even want to hit it but if they're if, if they're keeping in decree against me you know i'm i'm attacking them directly you know, I'm, and especially when it comes to the three king tigers in the side deck, mm-hmm. uh, that seeing the metamorphosis play is going to happen a lot less on average. The three king tigers yeah. also really, really good to, and I think is pretty, pretty mandatory for me at least uh, that they've proven themselves to like just play the game of protect the king tiger <laughs> mm-hmm. against control and. Uh, and I'm, I wasn't really too worried because overall, I'm not really playing too many traps. You know, I'm I, I was only playing two Sakuretsu armor. So the the three Dust Tornadoes, while they were traps um, in this deck, how you're supposed to play it, in my opinion, is you're not really supposed to set like a bunch of back row. So you're not really giving your opponent the impression that you're like a back row heavy deck. You know, mm-hmm. you're very balanced. You're playing... Uh, you know a nice even 18 13 9 in the main deck you know they're just you're just not really too top heavy in one way or another and from my experience with playing a very balanced decks like that they don't get blown out by decree you know the decks that get blown out by decree are playing things like solemn judgment you know if i have like dead solemn set you know, yeah. oh that's terrible or having to solemn judgment a, a decree oh that would that'd be awful <laughs> um, yeah yeah, and, and so I, I, w- I never really felt too pressured against like decree and I, I'm not really a big fan of rural decree in, in the general sense so like some people might side deck decree in this deck uh, and to, to that I say th- that sounds like a nice idea uh, but I don't like rural decree as a card <laughs> especially <laughs> in this deck because I want to be able to use like the the mirror force the ring the torrent the call whenever is it's gonna happen immediately you don't have the time in this deck to like spend waiting to use that card and to stall up 
with a royal decree, which I feel like is that's why it's included in a lot of control decks. You know, you can just wait, you know, just have the decree up, you know, wait till your hand is perfect and, you know, start value out valuing them. But the dust tornadoes are definitely like a much better card for me. You know, it's it, another it out snatch deal. It, it pops a premature burial. It's a very useful card. And I really, really liked dust tornado. You know, I glaze this card a lot but it's it just feels like such a an important card for this deck you know maybe this deck's not really an outlier you can play like three dust and anything technically but uh the decrees up i definitely changed instead of having that i played two cold wave in the side uh, and i really like the two cold wave yeah um cold wave is it's a hell of a card let me tell you I don't know uh, why all these Earth Aggro players aren't playing Cold Wave. I love Cold Wave. This card's great. The I I was testing um uh, some some stuff with Cold Wave um uh, actually tonight, and it actually it comes up. It can come up, and it's like so good against a lot of different random kind of matchups. Being able to just Cold Wave and then normal summon uh Goblin Special Gigantes get in for 42 half the game's done you know Oof, it's crazy oh, it's yeah. crazy oh, yeah. the big damage swings knowing that they're gonna probably side in sakuretsu armors you know it's, it's it's a great feeling to play the cold wave and say like you, you, my my opponent's not gonna be able to do anything about this and if they chain it forces them to chain before i make that play uh something that is great to note about cold wave is a lot of people will say, well, what if you draw Cold Wave and your spells? Well, I'm going to be using those spells anyways. So if it's the better play to open up the Cold Wave, I'm going to open up the Cold Wave and then I'll still have those cards available to me. If it's right. not the better play to open up the Cold Wave, then I can just use those spells, again, trade with my opponent, you know, do a, do a little one for one. And then in the simplified game state, uh, Cold Wave makes those top deck sets mirror force sucker through armors that they're all putting in uh even things that could save them like a top deck pot of greed wasteful charity or, or even like a snatch deal you can you no longer have access to that so something that that, that was really useful for me and i wanted to uh, to counter side my opponent with mm. i i really enjoyed that slot i also fear the burn matchup um I'm playing two Mystic Walk, but I'm also playing the, the 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 Cold Waves and the Mobius against that matchup, and I just kind of want to cheese that deck. I just force them to play cards, and I Grand Mark or or Mobius them after I Cold Wave, and they can't chain anything, or if they do, they chain at an inopportune time, and I just really think that Cold Wave is a very again underrated card underplayed card and maybe you can't play it in like blade in the blade knight warrior deck because you have to hold cold wave in your hand you know or else you have a 1600 blade knight mm -hmm. uh, but with the monarchs you know playing three monarchs in the list usually the cold wave monarch idea is i can get that through and then they can't chain and so i wanted that somewhere in the list I've seen people main deck it. I've seen people side deck a bunch of it. I've seen people like play it with like a Stein or something. And, <laughs> you know, I was like doing some wild stuff. And I'm just like, even if I can just go like Cold Wave, normal Spirit Reaper, that, I'm good with that. that then, that's still it, sick, it's, though. Yeah, it's super sick. I, 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 I really am happy to play like cards like these because they're all with a reason, they're all with a purpose. And it really sparks some good life for me for go format. Uh, being able to just go, my opponent has to set or normal. Next turn, I can go like Exile Force, attack directly, attack directly. And that's the the game plan that Earth Aggro is thrives in. You know, getting in those huge damage hits, halving quarter quartering my opponent's life down to nothing. And it, that's how you win in. In Yu-Gi-Oh, you gotta get your opponent's down, life points down to zero, and I said bet. Mm. That's true. That's true. All right. Um, so what I want to do next is I want to go because um, 
we were able to record a lot of footage or and there was just a lot of footage recorded at uh this collectible exchange journey which was awesome um you know i got to make my video right um uh, but then uh shooting the finals uh shout out to forest ent uh on youtube as well yeah, please, please um, subscribe to forest ent definitely subscribe um we're gonna check out your round six which was against uh i believe chaos um i think like just showing a, a chaos like an example chaos game one an example warrior game one um would also just be like super helpful to, you know because this deck needs i feel like more representation um so to get you know more people out there just like you know let, let's walk them through how to win with earth aggro yeah no i'm i'm definitely down i i definitely think that that is something that people need to learn because this deck is you can't just you can't just put it in and go you have to really like play test and know how to play it for sure all right uh so we'll be right back with that all right you guys uh we are back um shout out again to forest and uh on youtube for uh uploading uh six rounds of swiss and uh all of the fight or all of the top eight uh to the youtube channel um yeah, so please subscribe to forest and like the videos you know even you know even you know, comment in the in the comment section below you know being like yeah this is great yeah I love go format yeah give them some love um but anyway um this is going to be the game one uh versus chaos turbo um so just kind of uh go through the uh kind of your mindset going into the matchup um also julian is going to be on the left with all of the pins uh shout out his uh imped out spellground as well oh yeah so, that spellground's my baby i've had that thing for like a decade <laughs> uh. all right so looks like opponents going thunder dragon you lost the die roll earlier you said you like lost pretty much every die roll so this is this is tracking we're good yeah i lost like most of them i'd say um which is fine you know yeah. I'm, I'm okay with it the deck can, can easily play going second this is a classic thunder dragon you know he sets more than usual and i'm like i need this play to go through i'm gonna yeah. heavy storm right out the gate i don't i don't care this guy if he chains a uh like he, he can't chain the, a discard trap he, if he has a jar of greed go ahead i still go one yeah. for one uh, i think i have like an mst in my hand if i remember correctly but mm. i'm just like i need this tempo going second immediately so uh the early game get rid of the two cards is totally fine and i was happy with unless he like chained exactly scapegoat i yeah. was like all right if he's got it he's got it <laughs> i guess the worst case scenario for you would be jar scapegoat that would just yeah, be yeah it would be it would be over thunder dragon uh, rest in peace <laughs> yeah um so and he's he's kind of thinking about it he chains mst uh shout out to all the people that chain their uh msts and dust tornadoes to heavies i'm one of those people i love that um but i also i also really like the the heavy because we know that two of the cards are dead right now right because they're the two thunder dragons so like the worst case scenario this set could be is what Oichi in this I, game it state? could also be a spy uh it could also be a spy yeah i'm not like messing around with an early game spy yeah that's usually what you want to get rid of so i'm like you know what we i need this i need this guy gone oh that's uh, sick. right here a uh, very good play uh searching off the, the road of first mm -hmm. and then pot of green I really wanted to make sure that like my opponent's cards in his hand were like kind of dead. I didn't go for the Exiled Force play because mm -hmm. it could have still been a like I, I didn't really know his list is game one. Uh, he has like one real card in his hand. It was a Dekoichi. A level two could probably get like a good outplay, and I had the Trap Dust Shoot to deal with whatever else he Ooh. had. Which okay. is the magician of faith, you know? I just yeah. Get that out of here. So, um, kind of looking at the logic here, um, or like the dust shoot targets, right? So, you know, it should be just the moth, right? I mean, like, you well, can't you do could, anything. You could, you could choose the thunder dragon. Hypothetically, you could, because you have the answer to the magician of faith, right? Right. Uh, 
and you know you, you could make him draw another thunder dragon but to me he could just also just not set the magician of faith because there's not like a lot of like good spells in his graveyard yeah. so i didn't want him to go like into like a top deck pot of greed you know any kind of like weird stuff good top decks into making that magician of faith more live so mm-hmm. i'm just like uh, let me we'll, just get that we'll out just... of here deal with that immediately if he top decks it again then I, I you know usually can deal with it again yeah but... and he's he's just gonna set jar and pat and yeah, then so I'm like, yes let me eat that jar for <laughs> breakfast i will happily deal and now again. we're um uh, so like uh the normal summon of the rat um i mean we know that snatch is in hand right so like um i like the not giving him something great as a snatch yeah yeah if he takes if he takes my rat you know that's fine i can attack into my rat and then bring it and then bring out a monster of my own right so making that getting that knowledge in and you were able to take in notes for this event i didn't just because i'm not used to writing down notes and i also wanted practice for other events where like you didn't you couldn't wouldn't be allowed to take notes and Mm -hmm. i just want to play fast play fast go fast Mm -hmm. remember it's a good skill to have to remember cards off the off the hand and not have to write things down so taking a little bit to think he's probably like "Uh, i don't know what to do oh oh wait yeah yeah so okay this guy extremely lucky Extremely lucky. Just rips the BLS off the top. Oh, average, average chaos experience. Yeah, we have a a local chaos player at our uh, card shop in in San Diego at Shasta's WCCG, who is known for being, I want to say, the best chaos player I have ever seen in my life. And uh, shout out Rami. Yeah, shout out Rami. Um, he is, does this often, and uh, it's great play. You know, I would definitely do this play a lot more. Of, of just top deck BLS, and I would. It, it's just a phenomenal play, well played by my opponent here. Great choice, great choice. Uh, also, really quick, off so super off. It's Rami's birthday today as we're recording oh, this. So, shout out, shout out to Rami, greatest chaos player uh, that I've ever known. He's my inspiration. Um, definitely, definitely, I would play love that chaos, guy, but I just don't want to lose to Rami. True, chaos in the mirror match. I don't want chaos go very true okay so he banishes the rat here right and passes um good play i probably would have done the same uh there is some logic to attacking twice but his hand is kind of uh, he doesn't really want to spend the snatch deal on whatever i summon off of the rat and the rat could get like an immediate answer for the bls so safe play you know make the time don't put it in defense because some people play like a sasuke samurai yeah so um we're in like what turn four bls has already dropped um which is crazy very early but i mean he just happened to have the out um so what was what was the uh logic of duoing here was it just to make the discard any potential discard trap just dead while you try and go for a play or yeah that's exactly what it was um so he has two thunder dragons in hand Mm -hmm. and i was thinking yeah this is not gonna this delinquent duo is not gonna get really any better so if he has a discard trap set like there was one other one other card that i that he drew off of the jar of greed yeah that i didn't know that he had so he has like snatch deal mystery card dls and i'm like that could easily be a discard trap um so just to just to make sure yeah yeah and i just i wanted to get that out of the way he could also top deck like card destruction and i'm not about that life fair all right wait is this guy reading tribe yeah yeah yeah, yeah. he's like are, are you sure about that and, um, <laughs> like man he really did normal some tribe. this guy this guy this guy read tri- okay okay oh so, yeah it ends up being a book so i know that his, his next card is a snatch deal which means uh-huh. I'm gonna need to get rid of this BLS immediately. I right. attack the BLS, flipping it back up and killing it, and discarding a Grand Mark. Yeah. So we are officially in simplified game state. You know, his his unknown card is in his hand. Um, snatch is set on the field. The main the main issue is gone of BLS, 
And he snatches, attacks you directly, and let's see and what's going on. Yeah, and I'm totally fine with him taking the. I was doing a little like life points thing because yeah. I, I, I think I pressed it wrong on like the wrong thing one time. Okay. Uh, so I wanted to just make sure that that was good. Always communicate life points, and uh, make sure that it, that's good before making like a very important breaker here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Having super huge. Sure oh. Here. Yeah, and it's a spy. Totally fine. We're in the mid game. I have the tribe back. Mm. Finally, top deck the spy, uh, which was still a good top deck, but you know, oh, he's decking out of his mind right he's, now. He's this guy's this guy's insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy, he's, he's the top deck god. Um, so I'm like, okay, I need to trade. Get yeah. rid of it. Banish with DD Warrior Lady. Looking at the grave, it looks like you got a Gigantes. Mm -hmm. And we're just gonna go in. And might as well, right? Oh. Yeah, he's like, oh, what does this even do? I think this might be his first time reading Gigantes. <laughs> uh, which is uh, great for me. And when my opponent picks up Gigantes, he's like, oh, what does that do? I'm like, oh, we're, it's it. we're in the bag. You've won half the battle. Yeah, yeah. So okay. is the Koichi into... Uh, into Upstart. Upstart. Set, set, attack. Uh, he is back in, in the game. So do you feel oh. like you've lost a bunch of the tempo here? um because of just turbo's resilience like how do you how do you feel when because like you could say that you're like gassed out right now right um so like how do you how do you kind of get over that like mentally i mean you just have to kind of like trust the process when playing like an aggro deck uh, you're not playing for card advantage your opponent will be up a card or two usually you're playing for damage, and if I can get in those big swings, if I can, you know, mute my opponent's cards sometimes, uh, you just have to be really durable, and playing a million matches against Chaos will make you durable. <laughs> Alrighty, so we've got the DD Assailant. Uh, yeah, so here I actually so, think I make a bit of a misplay. I yeah. attack the Magician of Faith, uh, mm -hmm. and... I'm like, okay, I want to, like, get rid of the monster. But what I should have done here was attack the Tequichi. Because if he goes flip Magician of Faith, his Magician of Faith stays in attack position. Right. And uh, I am able to attack the Magician of Faith in attack position next turn. Mm -hmm. um, as long as he's not able to, like, Tsukuyomi it again. But yeah. he doesn't, like, have that in his hand. So I probably sure. would have changed that out. Was so grabs a snatch deal here. Yeah. So was the read that, like it was anything other than spy or when you were yeah, attacking the set the the read here was that it was like i i think i just wanted to get rid of the answer i wasn't surprised that it was a mission of faith mm -hmm. but in hindsight uh no knowing what he grabbed off of the mission of faith yeah uh i'm like oh I immediately right after i did that i'm like oh yeah I pro that probably would have been a good play mm -hmm. um oh yeah, he just stopped X the chaos, the chaos monster and kills me. Um, yeah, there's not really much I could do about that. Uh, All right. He has the film judgment set. I thought I played it pretty well. It ended up not that small misplay. I don't yeah. think it really ended up mattering that much. Um, and I, I think I played that overall pretty well. He he ended up getting into the good top deck, top deck BLS. That was... Chaos work at the right time. The, the right order of them and sometimes that's just yeah. how it goes against against chaos you know sure so we are into game two um normal summon goblin attack force love to see it pass yeah, yeah um, they can't really do anything about that you need to get that normal summon like yeah. like in in rotation so oh pot of greed all right so uh, uh, I do see a Saku in the opponent's hand, so he did side in, um, you know, some of the battle traps that, you know, people would commonly do against aggro. Same move, opening move as last game, uh, set to back row. Uh, and then what is the, um, what is the decision, or why did you decide to do the, uh, exiled force instead of level two here? Was okay, it so I am thinking, I, I played against so much Chaos Turbo. And mm. if they're setting multiple back row, I am saying that's Sucker Swarmer. 
every single mm -hmm. time. Sakura Storm Armor, Sakura Storm Armor. That's all they side against Warrior decks. Mm -hmm. uh, a majority of the time, some people side the control package. But if he went pot, pot of Greed, set Monster, I have to get rid of it. Like, I, I just, I have to get rid of it. Yeah, No matter fair. what it is. It was a Spy, which was a good hit. He ended up having the Torrential Tribute here. Mm -hmm. And to get rid of my Goblin as well. And um, I'm okay with that trade. Right. So he does set them off, which is very scary for you. Uh, oh, you also just happen to have the uh, level two. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I still had the choice between the two. It's yeah, like, okay. You, you book of Moons. Um, you, I see another Book of Moon in his hand, by the way. Yeah. Uh, this guy's on two Book of Moon. Uh, wild. But that is uh, pretty crazy. Yeah, took two Book of Moon, multiple Book of Moons and Solemns. This guy's flipping everything around. Uh, but that's not the right answer to level two. You need Sakura Two Armors. You need to get rid of it. Uh, another good point about Exile Force is if you can get him off early, then the pre mat Call the Haunted is better with being able to answer stuff with the Exile Force. So that's always like a good decision making if you're deciding between the two. Mm -hmm. uh, Exile Forcing early is always nice. Uh, and so he attacks with a Zombira. And I want to keep my, my level two alive for the most part. Uh, and he chooses not to attack. So I ring the Zombira. Mm -hmm. And I, I think he kind of misplays there by not attacking. Yeah. Uh, with the Magician of Faith. And I'm like, I'm going to absolutely take that. End phase, Dust Tornado, get rid of one of the answers. Mm -hmm. And I think it was a book. I hit that, that second yeah, book. Yeah, you hit the second book. Which was really important. So when you're, when you're doing Graceful with Earth Aggro... Um, do you always just try and pitch an Earth to make the Gigantes live as quickly as possible? Or like, you know, ideally, right? Like, what is what is kind of the strategy? Because I mean, like a lot, like Turbo, right? You know, you the the main discard outlet, Thunder Dragon, Serpent. Like we just get rid of, we get rid of the dead cards because that's their job. Um, but with aggro decks, you have to get rid of like real cards. So like what is the because like you pitched assailant and uh it was like a brain control here brain con uh, yeah, yeah. Is, is, is brain con here because uh, brain con's not really giving me too much usage by taking the magician of faith so i'm like i need to play these other cards that i have available to me and they're gonna get more value more damage uh with choosing which ones to discard off of uh Grace of charity usually you're you're gonna want to play it when you have any multiple of an earth so you're playing three of goblin attack force you're you're playing these m multiple grand marg assailant type cards and as long as you're not really discarding one of the more detrimental one ofs like exiled force injection fairy lily even discarding like a giant rat you know you have another one in the deck or maybe it's just not useful in the matchup get yeah getting that earth in the graveyard is good for gigantes but there are just much better cards that you're gonna want to get to and uh, that you need to be on par with the chaos matchup getting to your heavy pot of greed getting to your delinquent duo getting to your snatch deal getting to all of those power cards and i got into a pot of greed yeah which, uh was a really good top deck for me then we go normal goblin Flip up the yeah, Mystic so Swordsman. Right now, I want him to use something on this. So I'm just going to go in for damage and say, do something about it. I attack with with the level two first. Mm. <laughs> just in case he has a third book. <laughs> okay. Um, Was there... So yeah. Um. So, because I saw that off the pot, you drew a Grand Marg. Um, was it just more for, like... We'll, we'll get the Goblin to go in first, because it's less committal of a play instead of tributing the um like mystic swordsman to shoot the back row to swing at them off yeah you know you could have grand marked there and technically would have been impactful but i knew he was on solemn judgments and mm. i'm like okay so if i if i tribute my monster here for grand mark and he solemns i'm left with no monsters no pressure yeah. whereas if i trade cards here with the two cards that i have up the, he has to trade one for one which means I'm still going to be left up with like at least a level two. Right. Uh, so now I and, and then I had the trap dust in my hand. I'm no, I'm going to know what he's going to have next next turn anyway. Right, sending so back like, that oh. tribe was insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Putting in that work, that mid game trap dust shoot was really nice. Mm -hmm. So he snatches the level two, which we're fine with. Very controversial. So can... Very controversial. Uh, he mm. has to like set here. 
Um, and he just doesn't want me to attack with this level two. But I'm like, man, you know what? That's that's fine. That's fine. Just have my level two up. I'm not gonna set in response to that. I'm thinking of what he could have and what I should do. So mm-hmm. that early game exiled force uh, was really nice. I'm gonna get rid of whatever he had uh, because he took the level two so he needs his set monster to survive if it was like a sangan or something he wouldn't have taken my level two he just let it die right uh so he solemns the tribe uh just bait the normal summon tribe was just bait wasn't going to use it anyways Mm -hmm. Uh, i was just going to push for more damage and he forces the solemn judgment uh i torrent here because i need to be able to start trading off between the sukiyomi I mm-hmm. really like the Tsukiyomi. Very unfortunate delinquent duo, but I'm I'm fine with that. Yeah. Um, it means he's losing life points. He can't really do anything. He has the Thunder Dragons. He and oh. the Serpent. Big misplay on my own. Oh! Huge misplay. He's he reading just... Gigantes again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he should have just set the the Sin Serpent. I was able to get yeah. big damage against him. Uh, but the fact that I'm playing this deck at all is throwing him off. A big, right. big supporting of it oh uh, there's the cold wave i get the cold wave and i'm like all right simplified game state i need him to not get into good top decks and he solemn judgment to the cold wave and i'm like oh clay that, okay. uh, it'll eat the solemn so good oh so i i rip the the chaos orc out of his hand he's like i don't want to play the rest of this game man that's why because <laughs> he, he knew like that wasn't really going to go anywhere yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. He could have kept playing technically, he said, but he's like, no, no, I just want to go to game three, which he didn't want to like lose in time either, which yeah. I, I respect. You know, he's like, I, I'm going to go first next game. I'm, uh, you got this. He's like, yeah. you're, you're too good, bro. You're too good. <laughs> I'm like, I'll take a free compliment all day. All righty. So, uh, set two back row pass. Uh, doesn't have a set monster or anything. We go into pot of greed. Um, Thunder Dragon was used, so normal rat. He's reading everything. Yeah, yeah. He probably has been playing against like Chaos and Warrior. Warrior, okay. yeah. And he's, I believe he's X1 at this point. I'm also X1. Mm-hmm. And so we were having a good run. He's probably played against some good players. He rings the rat. Uh, it's a. Mm-hmm. It's I, it's an I play. So here, Spear Reaper side. Game three, I put in the Spear Reaper as a game three mix up. I love a good game three mix up. You know, I, I was like, you know what? I'm going to go second. I'm putting in these mind controls. I'm going to try to see if this happens. And it ended up coming to fruition. So I'm going to normal summon uh, in case he has Torrent. Right. So then he has Torrent's own monster. And then in the secondary order, I mind control take. Mm-hmm. And then we. I wonder what it is. I think it's like, I think it's like either a serpent or like a sangan or something. Mm. If I remember correctly. Let the ancestors so guide you. I'm letting the ancestors guide me. I don't roll for delinquent duo. Uh, I don't. It doesn't say roll a card, so I'm not rolling nothing. I hate it when people have to re-roll all the time. So I give him back his his monster. I rip the card. I rip a very good answer out of his mm. hand, and he does some damage with. Oh, it was, it was a sinister serpent, and yeah. so I'm like, ah, it's whatever. I'm keeping set. Okay. So he does some damage. Oh, it's okay. I'll take the damage. I'm going to beat him in the damage war anyways. Uh, I'm going to take with the brain control. Making right. the brain controls more alive. And uh, I'm going to tribute his Thunder Dragon for Mobius. He has to use the Solom on it because he can't deal with 2400. He's going to take the damage anyways. And I'm going to rip another card out of his hand with a Spear Reaper. With my Great Extender of Gigantas for more damage. Damage, damage, damage. Kill, kill, kill. <laughs> The ancestors are guiding me again. Hit it the chaos. We hit the sea sork. It was so good. So good. You know, you just, yeah. just just pick a random card, man. You know, none of this, none of this. Let me roll odds even. No, 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 no. Just pick a card. You know, let the let the spirits yeah. guide you. Let whatever guides you. Uh, oh. And this guy. So such a good top decker. Top deck's the beast. Oh. We're in mid-game, so it's not as bad. It's not yeah. as bad really as like the turn to board BLS. Uh, so that's like understandable. I'm like, all right, he needs us to get back into the game. That's fine. That's right. fine man. So he, I get, I guess he's thinking whether he wants to banish or attack twice. Oh, he's swinging. All right. 
Yeah, he, he wants to get rid of that back row too. Yeah. Uh, very interesting choice. I set the normal mana cost as a knock because I realized that like MSC and Heavy are still like kind of live in his hand. And yeah. I think I, I have another I have another like way to deal with a monster in my hand. So I think that might have made him play into attacking me, which was good for me. I take a lot of damage, mm -hmm. but I don't want him to banish the Spirit Reaper right. uh, immediately. And so I heavy in response. Mm. And he... He thought about it. He thought about it. Uh, but I think he might have thought I had a... a another no man. And so I might... Ooh. Have and so that's a, that's an easy, easy victory. He was real low. He he was like at like... like I feel like... Oh, fuck Five, 500? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he, yeah he, he, he was really low. Because he like sold him judgment to the bunch. Yeah. Um, and so he was in Spirit Reaper kill range, but I I think he's yeah, he might have been at like 500, but I normal summon the tribe, get it in, he doesn't have anything for it, and that, that's how you do it. Uh, this is a great showcase of Spirit Reaper, checking in that slot, doing messing people up, uh, you know, winning the high rolls of it. Sometimes you just have to, you know, play to your purpose. It's right. a great example of it. Okay, okay. All right, um, so then we're going to go ahead and do the, because uh, this is getting a little long, we're going to do the game one of Warrior, and then we'll just talk through that, and uh, be back in a bit. All right, guys, uh, we're going to be back with the game one against Warrior. Um, so, player on the left, uh, Min Zhang, shout out Min Zhang, uh, super, out, super man. great Warrior player, super skilled. Uh, this is the semifinal, so top four of that collectible exchange tournament um and uh we're just gonna go see what the uh gameplay is like against uh you know kind of in the aggro mirror or against very classic warrior so uh julian has won the die roll finally um, finally so we're setting two cards uh, so what so the goblin attack force you know just the normal summon is because nothing can run over it right yeah, nothing can run over it, and he's your multiple, so you're all right with them using something on it. He's kind of your main first turn play outside of Rat. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a interesting hand. I have to think about it. Uh, it's, it's either the Blade Knight or the Sasuke, but I'm pretty sure I rip the Blade Knight here, uh, just because I don't know what he's gonna grab off of the Delinquent Duo. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, yeah I, I, I rip the rip it. I don't want him to have. The big monster. Uh, his hand is not really the best, but it's great mm -hmm. if he was playing against Chaos. But unfortunately, he is not playing against Chaos. <laughs> uh, shout out to Min for the uh, main deck Zing Zang Hu. Yeah, uh, fun fact: I also have a, a losing record against Min in Go overall. Uh, he's a very good player and uh, plays everything well. He's got got good hands, and he's rolling the dice. Hits a heavy storm, which I'm totally okay with. Uh, I get to discard a no mana cross out and keep my one other real card. And so he has two cards in sand that he can't really use, three cards technically. Uh, and I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm ready. I'm ready for whatever he's able to, to bring bring out. It's going to be in my head. It's just yeah. easy rolling. So he's a very smart player. He's not going to let anything die by... Um, attack force I, a worse player would have just normal summoned and pass hmm. i i draw into a card and then uh i mystical space typhoon because i'm going to make a push here uh, i could have just not have attacked that, that was a big uh choice uh depending on what i drew but because of what i drew i'm going to attack deal the damage make sure i got what i hit and i'm gonna make force him to make a play now and something I really like, and I know we've talked about this like, privately, um, the the you know switching to defense for monsters like Goblin Attack Force, Giant Orc, shout out Giant Orc, um, being able to like you know kind of force your opponent to summon something to deal with it to like just clear it, which could just lead to a you know a misplay right um, or like a. Uh, just like them overextending. Yeah, so I I I wanted him to extend here because I wanted him to kill the the goblin because I drew into a Gigantes. 
And so I special summon the Gigantes, attack, and then I bring it right back in the main phase too because he's not going to be able to run over 1900. And if he does with like maybe like a top deck Blade Knight, I'm able to, you know, heavy storm <laughs> again. So oh, he goes and torrent. So, this, is a, this is a tough torrent that he has to do. We're going to simplify yeah. the game say right out the gate. Oh, and so there's the got, Blade he, Knight. He, Here's the Blade Knight back at it again with the white sword. And he's, you know, he's fine. And so I go to the giant rat, tag out the giant rat by attacking. I'll take the damage and I'll bring out, I believe, the home girl, the injection, the fairy, uh, the lily. Uh, we have a running joke at our locals, and hey, that's a bitch ass card. Oh, a thousand percent. That's uh, it. Also, it's one of my favorite cards. I, <laughs> I, love, I, I love this card, man. It, it does something that almost no other card. It's limited to one as well. You know, you can only have one of, of a Jack Fairy Lily. And it does something that no other card really in Go Format can do, which is a, a very, very unique play to be able to. And then having those rats against this matchup just to be like second and third Injection Fairy Lily. It's showing. It's yeah, showing the, I think the also um, in the simplified game state, Lily, you know, as small as the number on the card may seem, is just like insane. It in like just this simplified game state, right? Because nothing he normal summons can um, beat over it as long as you have enough life, and then uh, he has to lose tempo. He has to set something. And then yeah, yeah. Oh. so so the the big thing was the out there i could have done a or i could have lost like snatch deal but he, i knew he had a level two in his hand and so the normal summon deal 34 again he couldn't he couldn't stop that yeah um so that was that was basically it um you know that game one aggro aggro mirrors kind of go really quick uh this is something that i learned very recently just as a chaos player uh dipping my toes into aggro is just like the, the matches just go really quick. Um, but that's really going to be it for us here, guys. Uh, Julian, is there anything you want to shout out? Any any plugs you want to make? Anything you want to say to the people before we, we head out? Oh, well, we love the people. Shout out to everybody who was able to make it out to Collectible Exchange. They had a great turnout, about 50 people coming in. Shout out to Calvin YGO for having me on. I really enjoy it, and I love talking about uh, uh, the decks that I make and all the effort and the thought process that we were able to put in. Shout out to Echo YGO. Shout out to Forest End for uh, you know setting up a great a recording that is again underappreciated definitely needs more views so please go check him out uh, and i your shout out to the team wccg san diego california come on down we'll play some go and, you know shout out to all the homies i really wanted to make sure that for the up and coming earth aggro players that you're able to get some good fundamentals in with thinking about your deck like this i i love promoting thinking about a deck like this because it can really take you far even if you don't play you know this exact list even if you have your own spin on it even if you're playing a completely different deck a uh, shout out to you the viewer for listening and making it this far and committing yourself to getting better at goat format because that's part of the fun is getting a lot better and thinking about these high level plays and making these what would consider to be like a rogue you know bottom tier not good deck uh up into the the limelight and then after that top four if you'd like to check out my finals match against another warrior player which is very eventful very fun uh go check out my, my video if you haven't already on uh, echo ygo uh he does he does some, some good commentary over it and you get to see, you know, me get all really hype and, and drink some soda. So, shouts out, yeah. shouts out to everybody who was able to travel with me. And and you'll definitely be seeing me at future events. And if anybody has any questions, anybody has any, you know, you know, wonders or anything like that, or if you're trying to improve in some way, feel free to reach out to me. Comment down below. You know, let me know what you think. If you think I'm full of it, 
feel free to let me know you know uh, uh, point out any misplays anything that i could work on or improve to get better because we love we love to to hear that we love to see that we eat that up for breakfast you know just like we eat up all the the chaos turbo players all right guys uh links to everything that he shouted out will be in the description uh it's been calvin ygo and your boy julian uh Thanks for watching. Uh, go play some Earth Aggro. It's fun as hell. I highly, highly, highly recommend it.